we have the next session which has caught my eye and i'm sure you all are also waiting for this session or at least are looking forward like to know what's coming up in this session because the topic is such don't invest in women no 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 don't invest in women because you don't need those 3 trillion dollar opportunity well discussing this topic on the panel is jessica cook jessy draper she is the founding partner of halogen ventures as well as the creator and host of emmy nominated television series the valley girl show draper is the fourth generation venture capitalist who focuses on early stage investing in consumer technology companies led by females and co-ed teams joining jessica on the panel is the co-panelist who is another woman of power ritu maria she is the editor in chief at entrepreneur asia pacific and india so ritu and jessy we are looking forward for this amazing session and uh, i don't think anybody wants to miss this opportunity thanks a lot akriti i'm very excited to be here and uh, having this talk here with jessy draper and uh, you know i think the very fact that today uh, women are trying to help women entrepreneurs uh, that's one of the biggest things that can happen to the women uh, in business community uh, because that would make a lot of difference to essentially uh, women who are looking to sort of make or sort sort of say break a leg in the field of business so i think what jessy draper today is doing is something extremely uh, fantastic because she's created a vehicle through which she is trying to help women founders uh, in some of the most important aspects of their lives which is really to build a business find scale in their business and also be able to in some levels uh, balance their family life as well as their career so she supports them with funds resources tools skills um, and gives them essentially the the right foundation which will help them to prosper and succeed so jessy it's wonderful to have you um, to, to be talking to you over here at tai global summit and uh, you know as a starting point i would love if you can tell us a little more about halogen ventures and how are you empowering female founders by investing uh, early stage capital in their uh, startup organizations and especially you know what is it because obviously you you've sort of put 50% of the uh, human race outside of your investment criteria so what is it that you look for in a women founder when you go out and make an investment um, in a startup which is essentially run by women or at least partially has women founders in its ecosystem so um I first of all I'm so excited to be here. I am so grateful to have been involved in Thai for many many years. Um and the very first I just like to say the very first speaking engagement I ever had was probably in 2007 or 2008 and it was to a women's group um the the first I think women's group in Silicon Valley of Thai and I interviewed Lata Krishnan um who I met through Thai who is now one of my investors in my fund and um I'm just I love Thai I'm so grateful to Thai my entire family uh is grateful to Thai and my grandfather my father um and I all uh have been very involved with Thai for many years and um so just a huge fan and honored to be here today um and uh I yeah so I run Halogen Ventures we invest in early stage female founded consumer technologies so there has to be a woman in the founding team of 5 we have about 62 businesses right now and um i like to say we have three male ceos with a female co-founder um just to like we like men <laughs> we just want to make sure there's women it's funny when you run a fund focused on investing in women you get a lot of very silly questions like well what if a man works there and i say well we're building billion dollar businesses so i hope that eventually a lot of men work there um i just want to make sure that there are women in the founding team and you know um uh rita you you kindly alluded to the fact that um yes this is a, a big opportunity we're giving these companies the resources they need but also um women are an under like they're underrepresented in terms of investment in terms of investors in term like holding investor seats there's not enough women investors out there so any women investors just get out there go do it raise a fund we need more of you um and it it is it's a 3 trillion dollar opportunity it's more than that um women also in the united states i know and i'm sure the statistics are very similar in india um 
they make in women make 80% of purchasing decisions in households. So why aren't we as involved in the building of these businesses since we're making most of the purchasing decisions? Um, so yeah, we invest some of the things I look for, uh, and I'm a former entrepreneur. I was a media entrepreneur, um, ran a, uh, tech news blogs that I started in 2008, the heart being this show called the Valley girl show. Um, we were kind of like in those early days of distribution, acquired a few other tech blogs and, um, and now I'm on the investor side and, um, running this tech news blog site um, and the Valley Girl show, I, I did five seasons of the show. And I quickly learned that after two seasons, I had only interviewed incredible men in technology. Mm -hmm. And that was a problem because I am a, I'm a fourth generation uh, venture capitalist and the first female in line. I grew up in Silicon Valley. All I know is startups and technology, but I didn't think I could go into that because I was female and I didn't see any women around me. And so I went into entertainment and uh, uh, kind of combined this like technology entertainment background. And um, after two seasons of interviewing incredible men who I respect so much, uh, I just realized that I needed to change something. And I was facilitating the problem I had seen as a, a young girl. And so I made an initiative to interview 50% women in technology on the show. And they came, I call it like the Batwoman signal because I started just getting pitched all of these deals run by women. There is no lack of women starting companies. We saw nearly 5,000 deals last year. And I think it's because it's like a, it's just like a magnet. It's really incredible to see how many uh, women are starting these billion dollar businesses. And and so I started saying, sometimes you're a little too early for the show. I love what you're doing. Um, you know, I'd have a lot of them on. Uh, I'm forever grateful to the women of, of uh, fashion tech back then because it was like Jen Hyman from Rent the Runway and the Guilt Group Girls and Rebecca Minkoff. Um, and I don't know if you're, you are all as familiar with them, but they were early stage entrepreneurs in about 2010. And now they're running these enormous businesses and they made it okay then for Cheryl Sandberg to come on the show and numerous others, Lata Krishnan, et cetera. And, um, and I started seeing these early stage deals saying, I don't have a lot of money, but I can maybe be a strategic advisor and get you media exposure. Or um, as I started making a little bit of money, I would just, I, I was in my twenties and I was just emptying my bank accounts into these companies. I was like $1,000, $5,000, will you take it? You know, And some of those deals ended up doing really well for me. One I sold for a 25X return on the secondary market in less than 18 months. And then um, I came to a point with the show uh, and the, the tech blog that I had to kind of make a decision because the investments were going so well. And I thought, let's see if I could raise a fund. So I went out and I pitched, you know, 500 potential investors as one does, um, you know, closed maybe 50 of them <laughs> and raised my first fund. We're now on the second fund and uh, our companies are doing incredibly well. We sold one last year to P&G, uh, one to Walmart. Um, we're selling one right now. We've had about seven exits and returns and we're just getting going. And I'm just telling you, investing in women de-risks the opportunity because we are, uh, women are, there's so much data around this, but we're much more risk averse, which I don't think we should look at as a bad thing. It just means we take much more calculated risk. So we're taking in many more data points uh, than men are. But what we can take from men and learn from men is like, go with your gut sometimes, you know, at the end of the day, I go through my hundred item diligence checklist in terms of, you know, you were asking what I look for and I'll go through my checklist. But at the end of the day, I look at my team and I say, but do we feel good about this? <laughs> do we feel good about this deal? Because, you know, you're about to go through a 10 year journey with this person. And, um, and so I think, you know, you can, take only so much into account. And when you're investing, you do need men and you need women, you need to de-risk and then you need the gut, the gut check and the like, go for it as well. Um, and so uh, in terms of what we look for, you know, we look for a very, like any entrepreneur, any great entrepreneur, you know, we're looking for a fantastic entrepreneur, someone who can walk through walls 
breathe fire. Um, and, uh, you know, superhero. <laughs> we're looking for a first, you know, first the product, is it unique? Is it defensible? Um, is it, uh, you know, and then we look for, you know, product first, like, is this something that in 10 years will be a billion dollar business? Does it have some sort of traction? Is that a million in revenue? Is that a hundred thousand users? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're an early stage investor, I mean, entrepreneur out there, don't stress about those numbers. We also invest pre-product, but what I want to see is some data around why do people need this product? Um, and then uh, the third thing, which I should have put first is obviously the founder. The founder is the most important thing. We love co-founders. We love complementary skill sets. We love it when you know, uh, you know, what your strengths and your weaknesses are and that you've figured out how to deal with your weaknesses. And um, we look for people who we can partner with for a long time. So, you know, you're sitting in Silicon Valley and, you know, you're, you're a fourth generation venture capitalist. So, you know, one of the points I would love to know more about is why did you pick up consumer tech as a category for investments? I mean, you know, you probably, I'm sure the uh, it's much bigger than just consumer tech, but, you know, it says that Halogen Ventures focus on women founders who are in particularly in women te uh, consumer tech. So, you know, why consumer tech? What What is the big opportunity for consumer tech, particularly within Silicon Valley that you see it as a, a great chip to make an investment in. So while I grew up in Silicon Valley, we're actually based in Los Angeles. And um, we, you know, in terms of consumer technology, we do about 25% um, CPG physical products uh, that are, you know, typically e-commerce or marketplaces that ship physical products with some sort of like defensible opportunity. So we have a company called Flex, which is a menstrual disc that's an alternate tampon device. Tampons, multi-billion dollar industry. Um, and uh, this is another option within that category um, that's doing incredibly well. Uh, and then we, we do 75% pure tech plays. And so, you know, we have <clears throat> a company called the Squad app, which is like a Zoom type service for teenagers. They just partnered with Snapchat. Um, you can screen share, watch movies with your friends. People are obsessed with it. It's been very fun. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, in terms of consumer technology, I think it's, it's very, very vast. But because one, I came from media and I knew the opportunity of like media, I look at as simply a vessel for which to sell things through. So as a fund, I knew that what we could do for our founders is mm -hmm. add media exposure you know, we do influencer strategies with all of these celebrity influencers and micro influencers all the way to, um, you know, full press strategy, all the way to go to market strategy. And um, so marketing is kind of our expertise. So when it comes to consumer, that is a real secret sauce, I think that we have specifically as a fund and being based in LA, that's very, very helpful. Um, and then also, you know, in terms of women, uh, women are starting consumer businesses left and right. I think what I've realized is they're starting businesses in every single category. They're starting so many businesses that I actually had to really, really focus. Um, and so we, uh, right now we're very focused on beauty technology. Um, we're invested in a great company called uh, Prima Donna that is uh, the inventor of the first nail bot where I can take a picture of all of you with my smartphone and print it on my nail from their printer in under two okay. seconds. Um, and, uh, and then we're very focused on work from home, you know, future of work technology. And that was even before COVID. So that's been going pretty well for us. Uh, and then, you know, I'm sure you can attest that the United States government is incredibly inefficient. And so we are um, focused on companies that are consumer focused, but also um, have a government, uh, can work with the government. Uh, we're really focused on childcare as a category, um, foster care oriented technologies, and trying to actually solve some problems within the government. Mm -hmm. The government is a you know multi-billion dollar business. It's bigger than the Fortune 500 companies combined. And they have, we, all the tech, the technology exists to solve these problems. So we just need to plug it in. So those are three of the verticals we're excited about within consumer. Um, and then looking at sustainability and, 
you know, anything in femtech. Uh, I love that space just in general. Um, and um, I think, you know, you can go into consumer. There's so many different categories we really have had to focus. But you you feel that, you know, uh, the, the whole opportunity of building billion dollar companies is as high in consumer tech as it is in deep tech, because, you know, we've seen practically companies started three years back and now they're almost like unicorns and it's just like you feel that it's sort of hit that mark in no time at all you feel the same opportunity lies in consumer tech too oh definitely definitely i mean you look at i mean you look at amazon you look at i mean there's many many opportunities and now our whole behavior in consumer is changing so we're seeing unique um, even B2B opportunities that facilitate the consumer experience mm -hmm. um, that we're seeing as multi-billion dollar opportunities. But yes, we only go into billion dollar markets. Sure, absolutely. That's So, I mean, um, tell me that, you know, the, the pandemic has sort of changed the, the way, you know, we've been approaching our businesses. So particularly, you know, being now in the investor, uh, as an investor, how difficult has this period been for you? you know, to raise your fund, to get exits, to sort of able to be able to balance your portfolio companies, uh, keep them, you know, above the water so that they don't sink. So, I mean, what, what all, um, I mean, particularly one, your lenses as a investor, how, you know, as a woman entrepreneur, how, how tricky has this period been for you? And secondly, how have you been helping other women entrepreneurs in your portfolio um, to stay afloat? Yeah, such a good question. And um, first of all, I know it hasn't been easy for everybody. So I hope everyone is doing okay and that they're healthy. Um, it has not been easy, I think, uh, for anyone. This is just a new way of living, at least over here. Um, and I think everywhere is just weird. We're living, I've just convinced myself we're living in an alien world and we're like, eventually we'll go back to planet Earth. But, um, you know, it's been... Uh, in terms of being a fund manager, um, going into COVID week one, because we're in early stage, we were actually seeing our companies take little hits to revenue much earlier than, you know, you look at the public companies, like they hadn't even caught up. And so when we were starting to hear 60% hit to revenue, 90% hit to revenue, I got all of my companies on a Zoom call. It might not have been all of them. It was about 50 of them because I think I only had the 50 Zoom <laughs> thing. Um, and uh, and I just said, here's what we recommend. Um, you know, figure out how to make sure that you have 12 to 24 months of runway. Uh, become a marketing machine. I If you can't sell, you might as well build your brand. Um, you know, apply for the PPP loan, which was a loan that the United States government was giving out. Um, uh, and we just made all these recommendations right away. Um, we also offered a lot of uh, business service provider hours and just helped as much as we could. I mean, we usually are the 24 hour hotline. Like I was a few minutes late getting on our sort of pre-call because I was, you know, I'm closing a deal right now. I mean, I'm usually like the 24 hour hotline. Um, but during COVID it's the, I don't know, 28 hour hotline or something. Um, and we just tried to be available to our founders. Um, we also helped them raise. A lot of them said, wait, I don't have, you know, 24 months of runway. Um, I need to just like raise a quick bridge round. So we participated. We uh, raised SPVs with our, our investors as well. They like to have direct investment access. And so um, I felt like um, we paused everything we were doing as a fund, re-strategized, tried to support our companies, tried to see who was, you know, taking a hit. Luckily, um, we only have about 2% uh, travel and events oriented companies. And so we were doing okay. Um, yeah. a lot, some strange ones were taking off like um, the squad app going into COVID had over a million users and because they're this zoom type service for teenagers like you can imagine the astronomical growth where one of my team mem members had to help go operate over there for a minute till we could hire and place people <laughs> um and then we have like trust and will which is an estate planning online service and sold more wills in the last year than ever before which is so sad but good for business um and so it's just it's been fascinating to see what has done well um and we just tried to support them however we possibly could, but we actually were in the middle of our fundraise. I can talk about this now because I couldn't talk about this before. Um, 
but uh, we were in the middle of our fundraise and we had to pause because um, we wanted to make sure our companies are, are, were okay. And so we ended up fundraising for our businesses a lot more than for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, and then we just closed our fund on Monday, which if my PR person's listening, she's gonna be so mad that I just said that out loud, but we just closed our fund finally. And I want to share because it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, I closed, we have 84 investors. We raised $21 million. Wow. So imagine how many people I spoke to. <laughs> I mean, I probably spoke to 400 people in the last, and it took me almost two years um, because we paused going into COVID, took six months off, helped raise for our companies. And then, um, you know, it's no easy task. And I like to say that, especially for um, women and for men, you know, often entrepreneurs come to me and they say, well, everyone said no, no one's investing in my company. And I'm like, well, who's everybody? Like, who's everyone? And they're like, oh, well, I talked to eight investors. <laughs> I'm like, so plan on talking to 100 because then something will happen. If 20 in a row say no, you might need to like ask for some feedback and rejigger your deck a little bit and, you know, answer some questions uh, that you weren't aware they were concerned about um, and then go back out there. But if you plan on having a hundred meetings, something should happen. Um, and it's just, I think it's important to know, like you can't give up, you have to keep going. And um, yeah, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. And I think for a moment, I was like, can I fundraise through Zoom? Is that possible? <laughs> and then when I started, I realized, oh, wow, like I can. And I think it's absolutely incredible. I mean, we're investing through Zoom. So, um, but I think it's incredible that I have like 20 new investors that I've never met in person. <laughs> I think that's just crazy to me, but that's how business is being done and business needs to continue. And we need to continue to support these companies 